After completing Form 6, all Tan Sri Dr. Rebecca Fatima Star Maria wanted to do was to get a degree in English literature and work in the private sector. Upon graduation, she landed her first job as a cadet reporter with a newspaper company, but her civil servant parents cut short her stint. My first degree was English Lit. Okay, when you finish with English literature, what are the options, you know, those days, lah, we we're talking those days. Today, you got a whole bunch of, of uh, options. Uh, you either go and teach or you go into advertising. That's essentially what my, my friends, most of my friends did. They went into advertising or, or teaching or journalism. So my first uh, job was as a journalist. Huh? I worked in the Straits Times uh, and I was a cadet reporter for six months. And, you know, my, my parents were civil servants. Every civil servant parent wants their child to be a civil servant. So there was this, this uh, pressure for, for me to do something else, not a reporter, you know. So, okay, so, and the administrative and diplomatic service was very competitive then. Huh? And um, so uh, you have to go through exams and all that. So I said, okay, la, you know, let's give it a shot. Huh? If you're going to go, you might as well go for the best. And then uh, administrative and diplomatic service is, is still, was and is still, very sexy like, in, in the context of the civil service. In 1981, she began her career as Administrative and Diplomatic Service Officer in the Ministry of Trade and Industry and stayed on because she felt she could make a difference. It is really about service. That's why it's called civil service, right? So you have to, you know, think about it that way. If your, your goal is to make money and to, you know, accumulate wealth in that sense, then don't join the civil service. Okay, that's, that's, and that's the message I give to all the young people who want to join the service. Huh? Uh, in my time, I, my, my, well, my motivation was really my parents, go and join civil service. But folks today have options. So if you want to be in the, you want to join the civil service, be very clear. I mean, you have so many things out there, so, mu so much choices, so many choices rather. So we tell them the truth all right here is a place where you really join because you can, you feel you can make a difference you, you're contributing to a, a greater good you know you're, you're you're making a difference in the sense that you are contributing to policy or, you know furthering the cause of the country that that sort of thing you know it's whether you want to call it altruistic or not but the point is you stay you may join for various reasons you thought it was glamorous but you stay because you believe that you're contributing. And I think that's, that's what I've done over the years. In 2010, Dr. Rebecca was appointed MITI Secretary General, the first woman to hold the top position in the ministry. Her involvement and contributions include administering Malaysia's interests under bilateral and regional free trade agreements as well as engagements in various international organisations such as ASEAN, APEC and WTO. She was also the backbone of the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement negotiations. In 2015, she opted for early retirement at the age of 58. You hit that stage in your life where you, you, you keep thinking about what is more important now. You know, you reach this stage where you say, okay, uh, you, you evaluate your priorities and you say, okay, I've done my best. I've done what I needed to do. It's time to move on and it's time to really get back to, um, you know, having that, those things that I missed. You know, whatever you say in, in the 30 odd years of service, there were sacrifices that were made. And now it's time to maybe catch up. But with Malaysia chairing ASEAN and the burning issue of the TPPA, she decided she could not abandon the ship. But what happened was, 58 was a good time, but we were in, still in the midst of the ASEAN chairmanship. The TPPA was not completed. So you, you don't want to leave folks high and dry. Certain commitments still must be seen through. So uh, once that was done, so that's why it was, I didn't really retire at 58. Huh? That's, it's, there's an extension. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that extension really was so that we could finish one, all the work around the TPP. 
and the uh, WEF, World Economic Forum on ASEAN, we were hosting it. You know, and this is the first one on ASEAN. WEF was normally called, was previously called WEF on East Asia. But now with the focus on ASEAN and you, you don't want to leave everything and, and just go. So I, so the decision was to finish that. That was in June. And after that just wrap up and now you see the things in boxes. Now is the time to pack up and go. So the time, everything was timed. But I think everything was timed well, not because I planned it well, but I think it's also, um, I, I'm in my own old way very religious. So I think that it's, it's, it's the hand of God in some ways putting things together because as I retire, effectively 2nd of July, my daughter's convocation is on the, 10th of, uh, on the 16th of July. And then her wedding is on the 23rd of July. So things are falling into place very nicely. I can imagine if I was still working to try and take off from work for this almost the whole of July would have been really difficult. She is, however, a demon that she will not be back in meeting in any advisory role. I believe when, when, you, when you leave, you leave. You do not uh, try and impose your values and your your priorities or whatever onto the next person who's taken over from you. You you make a clean break and you go. For me, when the moment you take over a post, you already must plan for someone to hand over, you know, someone to hand it over to, because you cannot believe that you're indispensable and that you're going to be there forever and ever and ever. You know, you must start to plan your exit, all right? Uh, but on, on the other hand, you must also plan to leave an organisation in a better shape than you received it. I think that's, that's your responsibility. There are job offers, but Dr Rebecca says she will be taking one step at a time. On facing life after retirement, she tells herself to stay grounded. I've been joking about it. Uh, I said, on the 2nd of July, 2nd of July, I become Cinderella. <laughs> no, because now you have your driver, your car, you've got people waiting on you. On the 2nd of July, nothing, nothing you have. I say, I'll, be, I'll have a pumpkin, you know. You have that, honestly, all that, all the trappings are gone. So, and, and that, I suppose I've, I've had that in the back of my mind. You have it in the back of your mind that, you know, you cannot be a sex gen forever. You, you're not going to have all these things forever. So you must be grounded, all right. So... And how do I ground it? How do I? How am I grounded? My friends from way back when don't give a damn. Whether, sorry, my language. Whether you're Tansri or Dato or whatever, you know, they'll just say Becky. You know, it's it's they forget sometimes that I'm second gen of Miti. You know, at home with my family, I'm just Auntie Auntie Becca, and no one bothers about all your titles and the fact that you are second gen. No, they don't care. I think also being here, this ministry, there is no, there's not much of a power distance, you know, this ministry. Uh, we're quite, there's no protocol as, as you can see, yeah? we're, we're quite open that way. Um, so it doesn't go to your head. Lah. At the end of the day, uh, we all go down to your basics, right? So you mustn't let, mustn't get carried away, mustn't let power go to your head, lah. and end of story.